Formula E 2023 season review after first three rounds of Gen 3 cars. Well, we have seen a whole new generation of Formula E this season at Mexico Ypri. And after completing three races, I would like to share my thoughts about the start of Formula E's new era. Well, I would like to start with Porsche powertrains, Pascal Wehrlein and Jake Dennis. In my opinion, Pascal Wehrlein has been a very underrated driver. He has won the title of a very difficult series, DTM, made it to Formula 1 and performed at a very good level, but he has been left out of seat. Then he went to Formula E, but at that while Porsche was not that competitive. And last two years of Formula E have been totally dominated by Mercedes. But I was expecting him and Porsche to make a leap in Gen 3 cars and they did not surprise me. It's like history repeats itself. A German giant is becoming very strong with new era and new regulations. German giant Mercedes have dominated the Formula 1 in turbo hybrid era and another German giant, Porsche, started the new era of Formula E extremely strong. I can even go further. I think Pascal Wehrlein has a very strong case for 2026 Audi seat. You can check my 2026 Formula 1 season grid prediction video link from below. Both Audi and Porsche brands are owned by Volkswagen Group and it's claimed that Audi demands a German driver for 2026 seat. Sebastian Vettel's comeback or Mick Schumacher might be frontrunners, but I think Pascal Wehrlein has a case too. As you know, he is German and especially if he dominates Formula E in upcoming years, he will still be 31 years old by the start of 2026 season. Wehrlein has been so strong in first three races and his climb up from 9 to race win in Diria was a statement. Now let's continue with Jake Dennis. For Jake Dennis, he almost became Formula E world champion in his debut season and lost out to Nick De Vries by 8 points. Last season, he dominated his home air prix, London air prix, with winning one of the double header and finishing second in the other. In his first two seasons, he showed a very good pace racecraft and now he's an experienced driver who knows how to race in that racing category which requires very different type of a racecraft. Andretti team is using Porsche powertrains as well and it's clear that Porsche powertrains are the strongest one of 2023 Formula E grid and both Wehrlein and Dennis are taking the maximum out of their strong machines. And now continue with McLaren team. For McLaren, I could not understand whether they have a strong machine or Rust and Hughes are outperforming the cars since their qualifying performance is very high, but their race performance is not. Although both McLarens made a very good defense against Jaguars in second Duryar Epri, their battery usage looked very, very weak as well. Hughes luckily got P5 as Mitch Evans pushed to the line once his battery has drained. Biggest surprise for me has been Maserati team. They looked massively strong in preseason tests and I have trusted the high brand image of Maserati brand. And they already have Eduardo Mortara, who has been the biggest contender in last years without winning a championship. I really love Mortara's racecraft, but this season has been terrible for them, at least for the first three races. Another upset has been without a doubt the Spansky. I still think they have the strongest driver lineup. Jan-Erik Verne is the only double champion of Formula E and Stoffel van Dorn is the reigning Formula E world champion. I even think both has been treated unfairly in Formula 1 as they deserve to stay in Formula 1. But with a double champion lineup, the Espanski team looked like a backmarker in early races. Well, what I loved most about Formula E is unpredictability. You can check my why you should give Formula E a try video. You can see the link below. Just check what Mitch Evans did last year. He started very, very bad with DNFs, but at the end he came very close to the championship and he has been in the title hunt. With this Gen 3 cars, power balances looked similar to Formula 1. Teams with Porsche powertrains, Porsche and Andretti looked strongest. Then teams with Jaguar powertrain, Envision and Jaguar looked like the second tire alongside with McLaren. The Espansky, Maserati, Mahindra and Nissan looked a bit closer. Neo and ABT Cupra looked weaker. Especially ABT Cupra looked like a true backmarker in first three races. So I don't think we will see so many upsets different race results like Gen 2 era of Formula E. So it looks like we basically lost the unpredictability of Formula E. Another thing I loved about Formula E is chaos, simply. We lacked chaos as well in early three races. I think with having closed wheels, drivers were much more brave to attack.
Even Jake Tennis made very strong overtakes in rest days, or Verlein climbed up from P9 to P1. Gen 2 era was much more wheel to wheel and had much more chaos. And I think we have to be honest, watching chaos, wheel to wheel racing makes racing much more entertaining. And they should increase the added laps as well. In Duria Epic 2, safety car was out approximately 2 or 3 laps, but they have only added 1 lap. If they added one or two more laps, probably McLaren's will be out of energy or have to store their energy, save their uh, battery and lose their position to Jaguars, which might be very critical points for them at the end of the season. Well, even I love Formula E so much, I think the biggest disappointment has been the new intro, new graphics of Formula E. Recent era's Formula E intro was magnificent. I even thought about making former Formula E intro my phone ringtone, really. New intro music is not that bad, but not as excellent as previous one. And graphics do not look like as good as previous ones as well. Previous logo was much more better, and the starting grid graphic of previous era was superior too. I think converting back to old graphics, intro and logo would look much more better. I really love Formula E, and even though we don't have the graphics intro of previous era as well as the chaos, wheel to wheel racing and predictability, these Gen 3 cars look so beautiful, their pace and performance looks much more better and it's fun to watch. Thank you for watching. If you like to watch Formula E reviews like this, please like this video and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.